Thank you for joining me today. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking. Okay, thank you, Richard. Um, hello, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining me today. I'd like to acknowledge that I'm speaking with you from the territory of the Lekwungen speaking peoples, the Songhees, and Esquimalt First Nations. As the Minister for Public Safety and Solicitor General, keeping people safe is not only my top priority, but it is my legal duty and responsibility. In all our communities across our province, people want to know if they can rely on the police to keep them safe. They want to know that when they call for help, our dedicated police officers will be there no matter the badge. Back in April, I presented two paths for the future of policing in Surrey. At that time, it was possible for the city to choose either path to go back to the RCMP or to continue forward with the Surrey Police, provided they met mandatory conditions to keep people safe. One path was safer than the other, but both were possible. Now, today, we're in a different place. The city chose the path they wanted to take, and they presented their plan for how they proposed to do it. The question in front of me was, is their plan safe? Does it meet the mandatory requirements to, assure, to ensure adequate and effective policing? Unfortunately, the city of Surrey has failed to meet mandatory requirements to go back to the RCMP. That puts people at risk. So today, I am directing the city of Surrey to move forward with the Surrey Police Service to keep people safe. It's just not safe to go backwards. And it's clear people in Surrey want this uncertainty over. Moving forward with the Surrey Police will, present a, will prevent a crisis of policing in the city of Surrey without enough police officers on the ground to keep people in Surrey safe and a reduction of police officers across the province. I have made this decision under Section 2 of the Police Act, which states that as Minister, I must ensure an adequate and effective level of policing and law enforcement is maintained throughout, maintained throughout British Columbia. At this point, Moving forward with the Surrey Police Service is the only path forward to protect the safety of the people of Surrey and across BC. I've said many times that as Solicitor General, I must be confident that the city's plan ensures adequate and effective policing in Surrey and throughout the province. Over the last number of months, we asked the city of Surrey to produce a plan that, men, that met mandatory conditions to keep people safe a plan that did not rely on officers from other areas and that prevented a failure of policing in Surrey. I have reviewed the city's report on going back to the RCMP and discussed it with my professional public service. For the second time, the city has failed to demonstrate that moving back to the RCMP will be safe and will not impact other communities across our province. Without meeting the mandatory conditions, I am deeply concerned that if the city follows through on its decision, that there would be an exodus of Surrey Police Service officers from Surrey, and the RCMP would not have the ability to hire enough officers to adequ adequately and effectively police Surrey, meaning officers would be pulled from other units, creating RCMP staffing deficits in other areas of the province. This means pulling officers from the major crime section and their unit that deals with organized crime, it means pulling officers from highway patrol, decreasing traffic enforcement and monitoring. These services are critical to the safety of everyone in British Columbia. And I know that the people in Surrey don't want to see officers pulled away from these crucial services. The city's plan to go back is just not safe. It, pulls, it puts people at risk. The debate over policing in Surrey has been highly charged and divisive. I know that this is an extraordinary use of my powers under the Police Act, and I did not make this decision lightly. I've spoken with Mayor Locke to explain my decision. The Mayor doesn't agree with my decision, but that won't stop me from doing the right thing for the people of Surrey and across our province. However, I am committed to working with the City of Surrey and the Mayor and the Council as we move forward. As we move forward, it's important that we, end, that we end this uncertain and divisive period. 
We have recommitted to providing the City of Surrey with $150 million to ensure costs are not passed on to business and residents as part of the transition. I'm also appoint appointing Jessica McDonald as an advisor to help complete the process of making the Surrey Police Service the police of jurisdiction in Surrey. She is a former Deputy Minister to the Premier of our province and a former President and CEO of BC Hydro. She is a leader in organizational change, negotiation, dispute resolution, and in driving reform. And finally, I plan to propose legislation in the fall to ensure that a situation like this never happens again. I also want to take a moment to thank the RCMP and Surrey Police Service officers who work every day to keep people and businesses in Surrey safe. I know that this has been a difficult, frustrating, frustrating time for you and for your families. And to RCMP officers, this decision in no way is a comment on the excellent work that you do every single day. Whatever badge you wear, I know officers are dedicated to keeping people and our communities safe in Surrey and across the province. I also know that we can continue to rely on your professionalism and teamwork, and I deeply appreciate your service. More than anything, people in Surrey want this to be over. It is time to turn the page on this difficult chapter and come together to write a new one. I look forward to working with the city and our policing partners to make Surrey Police Service Surrey's police of jurisdiction. And I want to assure the people of Surrey and all British Columbians that I will continue to fulfill my duty to keep our community safe in Surrey and everywhere in our province. Thank you, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you. A reminder to media on the line, please press star 1 to enter the queue. You'll be limited to one question and one follow-up. Please give me a wave in the room if you have a question. Our first question today goes to Richard Zussman, Global News. How quickly do you anticipate the Surrey Police Service becoming the force of record in the community? And is there anything that can be done through the courts or through another municipal election that would further delay and complicate uh, the decision that you've made today? Uh, this decision is the, the final decision. Uh, the direction is clear. It's done under the authority of the, uh, of the Police Act. Uh, and we're very confident in the, uh, in, the, uh, in the legal authority on which this decision is made. Uh, in terms of the transition itself, um, obviously, um, we want it to proceed uh, in an orderly fashion. Uh, it will take some time. Um, it will be uh, gradual. Uh, the plan that has already been in place uh, has been paused. Uh, and that is the plan that will take us uh, to, the, uh, to the, the full transition uh, to the Surrey Police Service. Can you tell us what Mayor Locke said to you when you gave her this news? And when you talk about new legislation, what sort of tools are you looking at to prevent something like this from happening again? Well, I'm sure Mayor Locke will um, tell you her uh, what she said to me uh, to later on. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I understand and I respect her position. Um, she's not happy. Uh, and it's no secret that this is, uh, uh, has been a divisive issue. Um, and she has a, a duty to the city of Surrey, and my responsibility is not only to Surrey, but also to the province. Uh, but I think what's important is that, uh, is that we want to work uh, with Surrey. Uh, it's a, a, a growing community. Um, it is the second largest community in the province. Uh, there's a lot uh, of work. Uh, there's a lot of things it needs. There's a lot of work the province is doing already on other issues with them, and uh, I want that to continue. Uh, the legislation, uh, obviously, um, as I said, I don't think anyone wants to see this, uh, us, any, any government be in this situation again, and uh, my intention is to bring legislation in the fall that uh, will ensure that does not happen. Um, we will obviously engage in consultation uh, with local government, with UBCM. I've already spoken to the, uh, the president of UBCM and, and, and told uh, uh, her of that, that that is our intention. Um, at the same time, it's all, we also have been making changes, uh, proposing changes uh, for the fall in terms of the Police Act um, and uh, around governance and, and, and such. Right? But I, I think one of the things, uh, two areas, one may be that uh, um, uh, the, the, the uh, act or changes could be in terms of um, uh, a minister being able to get involved earlier uh, in a, a decision such as this, uh, but also uh, to be able to request and ask for uh, any and all documents and not have to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Next question comes from Katie DeRosa, Vancouver Sun. Uh, minister, why was Jessica McDonald selected for this position, uh, you know, given that she was 
fired as BC Hydro uh, CEO at the beginning of the NDP's uh, mandate, and uh, considering uh, that right now the the will she be able to mend the relationship between the mayor of Surrey and the Surrey Police Union, given that the mayor blocked them on Twitter and, and hasn't been uh, communicating with uh, Surrey Police Service so far. Um. So on the uh, appointment of Jessica McDonald, uh, she is someone who has a thorough understanding uh, of how government works, how institutions work, both at the provincial level and at the federal level. Uh, I think she has the skill, skill set necessary uh, to be able to do this, uh, this important work. Uh, and I'm very pleased that she's uh, agreed to do it. And uh, I think she'll do a, a terrific job. Uh, she'll be working, obviously, with the Director of Police Services and uh, um, and with the uh, city and the the federal government uh, and the uh, the RCMP, and as I said, I think she's got the skill set to do it. Um, what does this say about the larger role of of the RCMP in BC, given your concerns about its staffing levels? How, you mean you've previously said there's no uh, plan to move to the provincial police force, but is this an indication that going forward the RCMP will will get out of local policing and? focus on more national issues? No, that's not what this decision is about. Um, this is about Surrey and uh, public safety in that community and across the province. I know that there are, uh, you know, discussions. Well, in my mandate letter, uh, I have to review the, uh, the, uh, the, the all-party report on the, uh, uh, the reform of policing that, uh, that, that we received and, and how we move forward on that. That's in my mandate letter. I know at the federal level, the federal minister has uh, in his mandate letter uh, to review uh, uh, contract policing. Those discussions have, you know, uh, are, are, are out there. Uh, but this is about Surrey. This is about uh, the uh, public safety uh, in our in our province, um, and those issues of of uh, you know vacancies, for example, apply not just here in BC but right across the province. And that's something that we have been working with the RCMP. We will continue to work with uh, the federal government on uh, because it's crucial that uh, that we get those that we do uh, get those addressed. Next question comes from Rob Shaw, Check News. Um, Minister, do you regret not making this order? earlier in the process and sort of allowing these dueling reports and NDAs and everything to to end up where we are today or do you feel that this was the only path you had? This was uh, the path that, that, that I had to take. The reality is is that Surrey came forward and said that they wanted to go back to the RCMP as we're you know almost midway through a transition. Um, they presented to me their 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 I said I would need to have a plan. They presented that to me. It was analyzed by uh, within my ministry. Um, they came back and said, look, there are two ways in which we could do this. One is to continue with the Surrey Police Service. Um, and at that time, I said that was our strong recommendation. Uh, but if you want to go um, you know, back to the RCMP, here are these binding requirements that you have to meet. So they came back with that report. We've done the analysis on it. And, you know, no, it, it, it doesn't meet those requirements. And as I said, I am very concerned that if you have a max e mass exodus of Surrey Police Service officers, you don't have the, where are you gonna, where, how are you going to restaff them? Uh, and taking them from you know, um, other communities, whether it's through overtime, uh, whether it is uh, taking resources from you know, highway patrol or major crime unit or other specialty units, that's not going to, that, that impacts other communities. And I said, that cannot happen. Um, could you uh, expand on uh, Richard's sort of question about the legislation that you would like to see this fall? Like in the future, if it passes and gives you the powers to prevent this from happening again, what would it mean for a Metro Vancouver municipality with the RCMP who, who might want to go to a municipal police force and your, the process that you would, or the ability that you would have to make that decision, and what would it mean for your powers for other municipalities like, you know, Victoria and Esquimalt that are always fighting? What would it mean for the larger policing situation in the future? I think, I'll, I think, I think two things. One, it's certainly not my intention to, to, you know, to take away um, from local government powers, but I do think all of us, uh, certainly the province and local governments, have learned a lot through this, through this whole um, you know, process uh, that there are some real challenges. Uh, we're already engaged in reforming the, the Police Act, um, and this has brought to light additional, I think, changes that need to happen. Um, one, that a solicitor general, when making a decision, should be able to access, you know, information, all the reports necessary, without having to, 
um, sign a, a non-disclosure agreement, for example. Um, they may, and again, I, you know, as I said, we need to have consultation and discussion with local government. They may be able to make it clear, right, okay, local government, if that's what you want to do, understand if you're going down this path, you're going down this path, you're not going back. That may be, you know, a, a change that, that would be a good thing to have in place. So the reality is I think we've got to look at, 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 at the lessons we've learned from here, work with UBCM, and bring forward legislation so that I think all of us, you know, whether it's local government, whether it's the province, whether it's the RCMP, whether it's municipal police, don't want to be in a, in a situation like this again. And we have a question in the room from Dirk Meissner, Canadian Press. Hi, um, Minister. You said you spoke with the mayor of Surrey. You said she's not happy. You guys have traded barbs over this last little while. How can you guys resolve this and get to the stage where you're at least medium happy. Um, look, I've always been. I've always been. Uh, I think I've always been very respectful uh, to, uh, to to Surrey. Um, I have. Uh, I've not criticized. Um, you know, uh, any individual. Um, I stand ready, and we stand ready as a province to work uh, with city with the city. I understand. You know, um, the mayor's not being happy. I, I totally get that. Um, but I also know this, as I said, uh, Surrey is a, a growing community of, of almost 600,000 people, the second largest in the, uh, in, the, in, in the province, and may well end up being the, the largest in the province. Um, there's a lot of areas where we need to work together, and we want to do that. Will it be easy? I know, you know, right now, probably not. But I think the reality is, is we all want to do the best that we can for the people of um, our individual communities, of our province, um, and I don't think Surrey is any exception to that. I think the mayor wants to do uh, the best she can for the city of Surrey. Certainly the province wants to do the best that we can for the people of Surrey, and uh, we're committed to doing that. Also, you've said throughout this process, or the, your decision, that public safety was one of the, or is the primary reason why you've made it. Were there any instances or where you were concerned about public safety in, in Surrey? One of the things that, uh, that, that has, uh, during this whole process, has been um, a superintending of the transition by my director of police services, um, and I have very capable staff in the ministry. Uh, we've had uh, strong communication with the, uh, with the RCMP, um, being kept aware of, of what's going on. Uh, and so, to me, what's been important is ensuring that the plan that was in place uh, was maintained, which it has been, and that uh, we are able to, uh, 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 now that this decision I'm making today, that we are moving, that we will move forward uh, on that plan. Next we'll go to the phones. We hear, hear first from Mira Baines, CBC. Sure. Thank you for taking my question, Minister. Um, what level of support are you getting for the federal government for this decision, and what level of cooperation are you getting from the RCMP uh, and the commanding officer here in British Columbia uh, for this decision? I've had a uh, good conversation already uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, commanding officer uh, uh, McDonald uh, here, in, here in BC. Um, I, I expect and uh, there will be good cooperation. Um, I've made it clear that the, today's decision is not a reflection uh, on the, uh, the men and women who provide frontline policing services in our province. They do an absolutely incredible job, um, and, I, uh, and I have nothing but respect uh, for the work that they do. Um, we, I also raised with him the, uh, the, uh, the appointment of uh, Jessica McDonald and, and how she will be uh, uh, working um, in, to make the transition work. Um, I have spoken with the, uh, my federal counterpart, uh, Minister Mendicino, uh, in Ottawa, and uh, we have also had a, a good uh, conversation, a good working relationship, and I expect full cooperation uh, from the federal government uh, and Public uh, Service uh, Canada uh, as we move forward. Mira, do you have a follow-up? Yes, uh, and, and this question uh, just speaks to uh, uh, Mayor Locke's reaction to this decision. So you've given the level of discourse uh, just around this issue. Are there measures that are going to be put in place that guarantee support for your decision? For example, what if 
the city of Surrey decides to pull funding uh, from the Surrey Police Service, is there anything that guarantees uh, that there's going to be support from the city of Surrey for this decision going forward and supporting policing in that city through the SPS? So this decision is made under the Police Act, and the Police Act uh, sets out responsibilities and legal requirements that local governments have to follow when it comes to policing. Uh, there is a, a, a plan that is already in place, uh, and that plan uh, will, uh, have to be, will have to be followed. Uh, at the same time, as I said, to the City of Surrey, we have committed uh, that, uh, 150, that $150 million. Uh, and uh, 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 that's also why uh, Jessica McDonald has been uh, has been appointed, which is to work with uh, the parties uh, to make sure that we are able to to move things forward in a way uh, that uh, that works for everyone. Next question from the phones comes from Samir Koshal, Red FM. Uh, I'm interested. Thank you so much. I'm from uh, 600 AM radio station, Samir Koshal. Uh, Minister, so with your today's announcement, can we technically say that the police of jurisdiction in Surrey uh, right now is Surrey Police Service? Police of jurisdiction currently is still the RCMP. Uh, that's what the transition uh, moving the plan forward will get to. It will get to a point where police of jurisdiction uh, will uh, transition to the, to the Surrey Police Service. Uh, what I'm making clear today is that I am directing that that transition is going to continue towards the Surrey Police Service. Samir, do you have a follow-up? Uh, yeah. And Minister, and Minister, as you said, uh, uh, that uh, the, you talked to the mayor of uh, Surrey and she's not, seems happy. And in, even in, in our last press conference, she categorically mentioned that all options are open. What if City of Surrey or Brenda Locke, she goes to the court for this of your announcement, uh, what would be your reaction on that? Uh, first, um, I have every confidence that the uh, decision today has been made in full uh, legal accordance with the authorities I have uh, under, the, under the Act. And I also know this. Uh, I fully expect you know, the elected government in Surrey will follow the law. Next question from the phone comes from Michelle Bernaro, CTV. Thank you for taking my question. I know, Minister, that you touched on this, um, but I'm just wondering if there are any more specific details about the transition. When you expect it to, com uh, it to be complete, are we talking six months or a year longer? So I, I, I think it will probably take up to about three years to do uh, the full uh, total uh, transition. Um, the move to a police of jurisdiction will probably uh, happen, happen sooner. Uh, what we have to ensure is, is that things take place in an orderly fashion. Um, and that's um, what my director of police services, uh, that's what the, uh, the strategic uh, implementation advisor, Jessica McDonald, will be doing, working to ensure that that happens. Okay, and our last question. Oh, sorry, Michelle, you get a follow up. I'm fine. He answered my question. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have time for one more question. We'll come back to the room. Lisa used us, City News 1130. Just an easy one, I think. Where are you going to get all the police from? Where are you going to get the officers from for this Surrey Police Force? Well, uh, there have been applications coming in from across the, uh, the country. There has been a plan in place that has been underway uh, since the transition started. Obviously, right now it has been paused. Uh, the Justice Institute uh, has had their capacity expanded. Uh, that was taken into account right at the, uh, at the, very, uh, at the very beginning uh, of, the, uh, of the transition. Uh, and so they will be uh, supplying a, a considerable uh, number of, of recruits. Um, and that, uh, the, what's also important, and one of the things that, uh, one of the conditions on the Surrey Police Service, they have to abide by, and this is something important that the, both the uh, Jessica McDonald and the Director of Police Services will be doing, is to ensure that there's no, no destabilization taking place with any other policing uh, jurisdictions in the province. Thank you very much, everyone. That concludes today's event.